What's up guys? Uh, so welcome to this uh, new video. So today's video is specifically as it states, it is the five elements that you need in order to scale your internet based business or your service based business to six figures. So I want to say this on the front end of the video, uh, there's five elements that we're going to cover and we're going to have a little bit of a deep dive into them. And then we're also going to have a bonus at the end of this video. I'm not going to say what it is, obviously, because it's a bonus. So sit with me. Uh, let's go through these points. And then, yeah, there is a surprise at the end of this video. So firstly, we're going to look at empathy. Okay. Then we're going to look at stickiness, virality, revenue, and obviously scale, right? Those are the five things that we're going to look at here real quickly. So who am I? Why am I making these videos? So my name is Jean-Jacques from self Build Systems, and we specifically help uh, service-based businesses, internet-based businesses, saturated models, etc., uh, scale on the internet, right? That's what we do. And uh, we've recently, you know, onboarded a really, really cool, interesting project, which we are going to help uh, break the seven-figure mark. But I'm not going to say too much about that right now, seven-figure, and then we want to push it to eight figures, but that is for a, another topic for another day. So firstly, what we're going to do here is uh, you need empathy. Number one, you need empathy. If you ever watched any Gary V related video, you will hear him scream empathy, shout it from the top of his lungs, right? So why does he do that? Because you need to get inside of your target market's head firstly, okay? And be sure that you're solving a problem, okay? that people care about in some way that will they will put money down, they will pay you money for that thing. So then that specifically means getting out of the building and interviewing people and running surveys, doing the necessary groundwork that is required, okay? The second thing here is we need stickiness, okay? We need to go and we need stickiness. So which comes from good product, okay? You need to find out if you can build a solution to the problem you've discovered, right? That's specifically, there's no point in, you know, something when you're trying to sell something awful to someone, right? There's no point because visitors will spe specifically just bounce off and will be disgusted. Okay. So, and that also compounds as you get positive compounding effects, you get negative compounding effects as well. So companies like color for an example is a case study you can look at that attempted to scale prematurely without having proven stickiness and that specifically haven't fared well however they have they're not the only company there has been a bunch of other companies that have done that but that is a real good example for what we're looking at right now the number three here we have is the virality effect also you can look into viral coefficient um but that is a complete video on its own how deep you can go into that specifically however once you have got a product or a service that is sticky in quote okay it is time to use word of mouth so specifically that in doing that okay you'll test out your acquisition and your onboarding processes on new visitors who are motiv number one motivated to try okay because you have impelled endorsement from an existing user. That's why word of mouth is so powerful, right? And drilling it back to, to why you wanna be paying attention to actually having a really, really superior product or service, right? Because why, if, if you do me a service, if you sell me the best, uh, the newest, a new monster flavor comes out, I will always use this probably as an example, but a new monster comes out, right? So this right here still stays a classic favorite of mine, uh, however, something new comes out and and you try it and you think it's fantastic of course you're going to share that with someone right it's 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 embedded in our human nature right so virality is also a force multiplier okay for paid promotions so you want to get it right before you start spending money on customer acquisition basically okay through going through this um inorganic methods uh, or rather the inorganic methods like advertising, okay? There's a few things you need to do in order before you can jump onto the uh, onto the paid act boat, okay? You don't wanna jump onto the paid act boat and then get your, get your world rocked. 
So fourth, you need revenue. Okay, why do we need revenue? You'll specifically want something that you can monetize. Okay, you want to make some money, right? So that you can take that money and reinvest it back into the business to help improve your product, to help better the service, and to overall improve the customer journey and increasing that AOV, right? So that doesn't mean you have already been charging money, okay? Now, for many businesses, even the first customer has to pay. Now, that's fine, okay? We want to focus, when we're looking at product market fit, if you don't have someone actually fronting money for your thing, right? Then you don't have a thing. You just have an idea and ego involved in the process. So you're giving away free trials, free drinks, free copies, etc. whatever you need to do to get the ball rolling, to get people into the door, get them knowing, okay? And now you're focused on maximizing and optimizing revenue, okay? Then at number five here, we have the scale. Now, many times you might have heard or specifically seen people refer to it as the hockey stick curve. However, scale is something very close to my heart. So let's quickly look at it. So uh, with revenue coming in, okay, it's time to move from growing your business to growing your market. So you need to acquire more customers from new verticals and new geographies, right? You can invest into channels of distribution to help your user base. Obviously expand, grow, get more aware of your thing um, and tell people about your thing, right? So since direct, People won't always tell people about their thing unless your thing is actually good. So um, since direct interactions with individuals, okay, individual customers is less critical, your past product market fit, okay, and you're analyzing things quantitatively. So let's quickly consider a restaurant in this example, okay? Beautiful restaurant, could that be a mom and pop restaurant or it could be chain, doesn't matter. Empathy here is before opening the like the owner firstly learns about the dining the diners in the area okay and then their desires what foods are available what trends specifically are in the uh, environment in the industry etc uh, and what trends there are in eating in general so then we're gonna look at the stickiness so then specifically stickiness it's it develops they go out they develop a menu okay they test it out with consumer marketing etc frequent adjustments until the tables are full stacked, right? And the patrons return regularly. They have actually those customers coming back. So he's giving things away, testing things and asking diners what they think. Okay. So costs are high because of variance and uncertainty and specifically inventory. Okay. Those are the costs. What is required to make the thing work? to get your growth machine profitable. So virality here, okay? He's starting a loyalty program to bring frequent diners back, okay? Or encourage people to share with their friends, social media, etc., build build a brand, etc. Uh, he engages on Yelp and on specifically something like for a square. Then we're going to look at revenue here at the fourth point here. Is we have the virality kicked off, okay? He works um, on margins, fewer, uh, basically free meals, tighter controls on the costs, and the more standardization, right? So that last point here is scale. So finally, knowing that he can run a profitable business, he pours some of that revenue into marketing and promotion, right? So then he reaches out to food reviewers, he travel magazine, um, radio stations, etc., and he launches a second restaurant or a franchise and based on those initials. Sometimes people think that's the best way to go about it, but I, I guess that's why, <laughs> that's why we are here. That's why we are here to help you make those best decisions in which avenue and area it is that you can look into and how to really optimize that and get the most juice out of that lemon, really, right? So bonus, let's get to the juicy stuff here. This is the real juicy stuff, what I've been waiting for here. Right. So qualitative data and quantitative data. Let's have a look at what this is. Right. So there are two types of data used in research and statistical analysis. Right. So the main differences between them are as follows. So we have nature of data. So qualitative data is non numeric, descriptive and subjective. Well, well, basically, the, the, the quantitative data is numeric measurable and objective. Now I want to say this on the bat. If this is something that's new to you, well, obviously 
when I first learned the principle of the two different uh, of the uh, basically the qualitative and the quantitative side, it's a bit of a tongue twister and you have to wrap it around your mind a bit. So allow yourself, if it's new to you, allow yourself, go through this video more than once, allow it to sink in, make notes, go implement, right? So as I've said here, um, okay, uh, measurements here, okay, number two here, is the qualitative data is measured using attributes of quantities or rather qualities such as color, shapes, texture, taste, and opinion, okay? So qualitative data is measured using numerical values such as height, weight, age, temperature, and numbers of items, right? Then we're going to look at the data collection method. So uh, qualitative data is usually collected through observations, interviews, and focusing on groups, uh, while qual basically the other side, the quantitative data, is collected through surveys, experiments, and statistical analysis, right? So data analysis, on the other hand, ha we have the quant the qualitative data is analyzed using methods such as content analysis, thematic analysis, narrative analysis, while qual quantitative data is used to analyze using statistical methods such as mean, median, mode, and standard deviation, right? Again, it's a tongue twister, okay? You can still see me tongue twisting things. I'm human. But just, just learn the principle, learn the concept and apply. I promise you this will be an absolute game changer for you. If you want me to make a bit more in-depth video on, on the data, uh, the different data sets, et cetera, metrics related things, let me know in the description down below. I can definitely do that for you guys. I just need to see that there is actually some need for, for something like that, right? So again, in con basically in conclusion here, we have quantitative uh, data, okay? often leads to more ex, uh, ex, basically like explore, ex, exploratory kind of like conclusions, right? While quantitative data often leads to more like a definite and precise conclusion. That's the main kind of like two differences, right? So in summary, qualitative data is concerned with understanding the characteristics and the qualities of a phenomenon while quantitative data is con basically concerned with measuring, quantifying the specific phenomenon in terms of numeric values, right? So last point that we have here is the key to qualitative data patterns and pattern recognition. So there are a few positive uh, specifically patterns to look out for when interviewing people. Okay, so they want to basic, they're fully invested in the process right away. They want to pay you kind of relationship, right? To learn, etc. right? So they are actively trying, okay, to, to solve the problem in the question set. They talk a lot and ask a lot of questions, demonstrating a passion for the problem. They lean forward, specifically with their body language, you can see that they're listening. You can see it in their eyes. They lean forward, okay? They uh, specifically, they lean forward and are animated specifically. They're, they have a positive body language. So here are a few negative patterns that you should also be able to just, you know, catch them. So they're distracted, okay? They're looking everywhere. They're looking everywhere. They're not present, okay? Or their eyes keep going here or there, right? Okay? They talk a lot but not about the problem or the issue at hand. They're rambling about mumbo, right? So their shoulders could be slumped forward, okay? Or they slouch, they're just like, ah, you know, I don't really wanna be here kind of effect, right? Okay, that's energy they're right there, and energy don't lie. So the slouching in their chairs, negative body language, etc. and at the end of the problem interview, specifically at the end of the problem interview, it is time for a quick gut check. Ask yourself, am I prepared to spend the next five years of my life doing nothing else but solving the problem in the question? If that is not a fuck yeah, then you don't have the right person, okay? So one example of tracking quantitative, or rather in this scenario, the uh, yeah, the quantitative data is tracking the number of daily website visitors on a website, okay? So this can be 
measured using a tool like Google Analytics, which provides numerical data on the number of visitors, pages, specifically number of visitors on the pages they visited, the time spent on the website and on other metrics. Okay, so this data can be used to track trends in websites, traffic over time, identify uh, popular pages, products, and make data-driven decisions on websites, specifically design and content. That is why at South Pole Systems, we love data so much. Okay, that is it for this video. Uh, this has been Jean-Jacques from South Pole Systems. And guys, again, if you appreciate these videos, if you like these videos, show us some appreciation. Leave a like in the, uh, in basically just leave a like on the video and leave a comment in the comment section down below on what you think about this video. And yeah, I'll be making more of these videos. They'll be on their way. So I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.